Hello everyone, and shock horror, you can see my faces today. Uh, it is lovely to see you all, and uh, by the way, this is still how I look. This is very much it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's sunny, we've had some rain, and here we are again. No school, and uh, more of the same. Let's have a look and see uh, who we have in today. I'll be curious to see who is here. Let's have a look. So, uh, Adam, hello. We've got uh, Aditya. Hi. We've got... Uh, Cat boy is Gabe, isn't he? Hi, Gabe. Um, we've also got Katie. Hi, Katie. And we've got Erin. Hi. So, how are we all keeping? Are we surviving the rigours of... Hi. We've got Lily Frost as well. Hi, Lily. How are you? Good to see you. Um, yeah, so here we are. Um, another exciting, another exciting week. We've got Emily. Hello. And we've got Daisy. Hi. It is lovely to see you all. Well done for making it here again uh, at the end of your very busy day. I'm sure you spent all day working really hard. Or have you been out in the garden? Let me know in the comments what you've been up to. It is lovely to see you all. Um, so I guess we should crack on and do some photography. Uh, Lizette. Hi. Do you know, Lizette, I felt really bad last week when um, I said, you know, you have to give the answers before I actually do. And then I realised there was that delay. And I felt really bad. And then I thought it's Lizette. And I thought, ah, do you know what? I think you'll cope. So it is really good to see you all. And uh, thanks for coming along. So let's crack on and do what we need to do today. Um, and I think we'll start off by, uh, oh, by not looking at this. My thing's gone to the wrong place. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to take a whiz back to here. And, uh, oh, you're going to see the whole world in uh, in reverse for a second. And in fact, what I'm going to do is zip back to my cam and talk to you for a moment. I oh, know I'm not. I can't be bothered. Here we go. So I hope you've all been doing really, really well. You have produced some absolutely astonishing photos. I felt quite bad because I didn't get around to looking at them all until, uh, until the day before yesterday. And I realised you've actually made as many amazing photos this time round as last time round. So what I'm going to do is usual thing. I'm going to whiz through all of these and I'm going to be very nice about them. And I'll go back to front and tell you what we're going to do. So today's job is uh, all about settings. Um, and just so you know, the word focus, because we pick a, a language fact of the week, and the word focus comes from the Latin focus, which means it meant hearth or fireplace, which is quite interesting, isn't it? So it's at the centre of things. Uh, and it's, it's come to mean a point of convergence in, in photography. So today, your brilliant photos, masterpiece. Now, <laughs> I've also, I have made some jingles, which I know you're going to really really like so uh, my favorite jingle that i've made myself a standby this is my masterpiece jingle i'll be playing this several times today watch out for this masterpiece. astonishing eh? absolutely astonishing um i've got various jingles that i've made uh, it really is time to go back to school once i start making jingles isn't it so we'll have a look at some settings uh we've got uh we're going to tie the competition over for two weeks i've had about three entries for it i want some more so you know the spot the difference it is difficult but try to figure it out i want more than three the idea was i put it in a hat but with three three entries i'm going to have three entries bouncing around on their own in a hat so get the competition done it's all on google classroom so have a look at that before next week and then we'll set the assignment <laughs> i've given away you've seen all the pictures anyway but i want to go through them with a bit more care and try and uh, and try and tell you what i really like about them this was one that didn't go in last week. Uh, this was from Grace. I love the diagonals of the big rocks going across the river. I'm not quite sure where that is, but it's very pretty. I like the blue filter. I like the clouds. I like the glare of the sun. It all works incredibly well. Fabulous picture, Grace. I love Aditya's photo of uh, this flower. I'm not gonna hazard a guess at what it is because I'm rubbish at flowers, but vibrant colors, fabulous, really nice. And um, also you can see, Aditya was forced to sharpen that quite a lot and it's uh it's I think it's come out really really well then we have the first of two this was Emily with a squirrel um the photographer that we're talking about today is a guy called Henri Cartier-Bresson and he's he's the guy who's been well known for this idea of capturing the moment and if you've got your camera on you and you figured out how to get to take your picture really quickly uh this was it because squirrels don't don't stay still for very long and uh, I thought this was incredibly well captured. There's one more of these a bit later on with the action squirrel shot. But I thought, Emily, you did really, really well uh, to do that. Now, I've actually figured out that I can bounce in and out of these uh, of the of the chat, which I'll do in a second. 
the shadow would have ruined my photo. It's difficult, isn't it? The shadow, the shadow is really, really hard, and you're forced sometimes to possibly over sharpen things and you play around with the contrast you play around with the aspect ratio and of course aspect ratio is what we're going to mainly focus on a bit later on today but the great thing is i can use your photos as as sort of ways of demonstrating aspect ratio this one gabe uh i'm pleased to see you're giving your sister a very hard time she looks thrilled is this your sister to be kicked repeatedly as you saw through the air very impressive though old boy very impressive that you uh can get that high off the ground she looks reasonably happy. Uh, but anyway, that's great. I thought that was fabulous. Also square, which is what you ended up. I guess that was a decision that you took because of what was in the in the outside of the frame. But I think that came out really nicely. Well done. Um, Sharjeev, Hindu god. I, this is Ganesh, isn't it? Sharjeev, I think. Uh, the elephant. But uh, he's looking very, very happy there. I think it's a great shot of uh, of. Ganesh and a seashell there, some lovely yellow colours, really vibrant colours there, I thought it came out incredibly well. Aditya, I preferred this one, uh, I think it's the same flower isn't it, but you caught what is a, a honeybee I think on it, lovely uh, lovely greens around it as well, and the uh, the bouquet, the bit that's out of, the bit that's blurry, looks really nice as well, I thought that came out incredibly well. Good effort. Uh, Sharjeev, I've got no idea whether it's a mini watermelon, but I'll take your word for it. But I think you captured that really well. And that was in some kind of tank, I think, which is always difficult to do because you've got those reflections, which is what we can see with those sort of lines at the top right there. But I thought that came out exceptionally well. Good effort. Uh, Emily, I love this. I love the frame within the frame, the fact you've got the wire link fencing there at the top and that you've got the river sort of bending away, uh, meandering away, bending away towards the right hand side. It's a really nice photo. It works really well that you've got that bit of chain link right at the top there, right in your eye line. It works really well. You're looking through a sort of a square that's been turned on its side. I thought that was a great picture. It worked really, really well. Uh, Erin, you've you've done some crackers this week, Erin. I thought this was one of them. I really like the the symmetry that you've got here, and that symmetry with uh, again we talked about lines last week. A lot of you have actually um, oh, it's a different flower. Okay, did you? Fair enough. I thought same, same color. Give me some credit. I'm not much on flowers. Um, I thought that this worked very well with the assignment, the sort of challenge you were set last week, with the lines going. Uh, going as far as the eye can see and I, th I the fact that the horizon kind of it, it moves up the land sort of moves up and then you've got the foliage at the end and you've got that focus of that building at the end not sure what it is but that works really really well and you look like you got quite low for that one as well I thought that was a really cracking shot um, probably taken around midday somewhere I'm guessing I like this one Emily along the branch I think I go out and I try these shots and for every four that I try I get maybe something that I like every 10 that I try I thought this came out really well um, I think you've got that that leading line that diagonal going off towards the top left of the frame oh it's a windmill okay it's a windmill oh very good okay yeah I thought that worked incredibly well um, nice shot what have we got here Erin again with the plum trees I like this I think your choice of filter was good I think it brought the clouds out and the way you've got, you know, those those converging lines and when it's sort of going down to nothing at the end there, I think that really gives a fabulous sense of perspective. I think the colour worked really well there because <laughs> it's funny, but sometimes when you're shooting at this time of year, you end up with just too many greens. And uh, sometimes just going, um, going black and white, going grayscale can really help. So I thought that was outstanding. Really, really good. I love this from Samantha. I don't think that she's here to see this, but... It's really interesting and it's a massive challenge to photograph your own eye and actually I think the eyes are cool. One of my favourite films, Blade Runner, this sort of this sort of image that always they keep coming back to is that of the eye, the human eye seeing things. The difficulty is to actually get the eyeball um, in focus, whereas you can see it's the it's the eyelashes that are in focus there. But next week, I think it's next week, we're gonna have a look at focus lock on cameras and see if you can uh, if you can move somewhere with that idea. Beach huts here, again, I love this. I think that works really, really well. Strong shadows, and you've got sort of opposing diagonals. No, you've got your verticals, you've got the diagonals. I think it's just, uh, I think it's a really, really nice shot. Uh, isn't that the Christmas film? Hmm, I don't know, which one? Possibly, that one there, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether it is or not the Christmas film. 
Oh, right, cats. Well done, Rachel. Uh, always good to have a cat. This is Minty, I guess, and those are Minty's whiskers. A bit of a scruffy sound, so isn't he? Um, I've got a dog as this scruffy. I'm sure he's lovely, but uh, yeah, they are pretty good whiskers. Doesn't look like you want to mess with with Minty. Tell me, if you tickle his tummy, does he bite you? That's the question. Well, I find most cats do. Uh, scaffolding. Yeah, great for lines, Erin. I thought this was fabulous. Your verticals, your horizontals, your leading lines, lots of triangles, lots of angles. I thought that was a really well thought out shot. And um, I thought that came out pretty well. As if on cue, the dogs start barking because they like to do that. Uh, Tilgate Forest, I like this. I like the fact that you had the pylon in the background. I always feel like they look like um, angry men who are gonna pull their legs out and start running. And then you've got the uh, the post there, and that post, which I initially saw, and I thought, oh, I wonder why you've got that there. And the more I looked at it, I, th I was thinking, no, it actually gives that image balance. I think it looks really, really nice. And then the longer you spend with it, you've got the um, you've got those uh, cables running as well. So I thought that was thought that was a really, really nice shot. Well done. What else have we got? We've got uh, Daisy. I really like this. There's so much to take in with this uh, image, Daisy. The colours, uh, vibrant, lovely. You've got the wispy cloud. Or is it glare? I'm not quite sure. And then you've got these arrangements of sort of wood, the lumber, arranged in lines around the uh, around the image. I really like it. I think that's a great image. Mr. Leadbitter, he took an absolutely cracking one. Did you all see this on, on, on uh, Flickr? I thought this was brilliant. So he's got those uh, natural lines. So he's, he has a leaf and he's managed to get the, uh, the sort of droplets of rain or dew on the leaf and he's got one later on which is a bit of a close-up I think that's a cracking image lovely diagonals oh here we go here's the action shot of the squirrel the aforementioned squirrel who's about to set off on his or her business I thought that was very impressive so and I think impressive to notice the squirrel and impressive to actually get this picture taken before the thing ran away so that was uh, a good effort Shajeev, I like this. Um, again, something inside a tank. I think it's a challenge. Uh, you did it. You made it. Squ it's not quite square. It's very nearly square. Maybe it's square. I don't know. But it's 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 there or thereabouts. But I think great colours, and also the fact that you've got the head on and a slight angle on the other fish. I think that works really quite well. I like this, Rachel. You took some brilliant pictures this week. Uh, Worth Church, AD nineteen fifty. I thought this was brilliant. I love the combination of shapes that you've pulled out of the hat here. I thought that worked really well. If I had taken this, I would find it hard not to resist the temptation to have a muck around with the um, with the colour. And maybe it might bring something out in the brickwork. And I'd be quite tempted to maybe sharpen it a little bit. This looks quite unsharpened. It looks as though that's how it came out of the, out of the camera. So, and it's maybe... I don't know, I think that's a really good image. It's interesting, they've got things called tilt and shift lenses which solve, solve the problem of photographing um, uh, architecture like this because when you stand the photograph um, buildings they always look like they're falling away. But there's a tilt shift lens which means you can actually move, the, the lens can move upwards and sideways while staying obviously attached to the camera and it means that you can get the perspective right and if you look at really high-end um, architecture images that's how they keep the straight line straight rather than the lines converging uh, just a simple shed but not a simple photo I like the fact you spotted this Katie I like the fact that you uh, have got the verticals and the horizontals working at the same time in addition to that horizontal cutting across the frame uh, in terms of the shadow uh, I like this two meters plus a pair of feet uh, we've got toes and we've got yellow line and we're just seeing these lines everywhere, aren't we? Uh, as we as we carry on through this this crazy time, it must feel very odd for you guys uh, being locked at home for months and months on end. Uh, it's strange enough having had having being my age to put up with this, but I imagine for you guys it must be it must be quite difficult. So all of these phrases we're hearing, social distancing and uh, track and trace and goodness knows whatever else. Anyway, Sharjeev. I love this. I love the path. I love the green on one side. I love that you've got different levels on it. I love the splash of colour in the middle. I think it works really, really well. This was Mr. Leadbitter's second one, um, which I'm not sure whether it was his first one that he's just um, magnified, but I think that's staggering. Um, and I'm assuming he got, the, he got that with his, with his phone. So I think that's very, very impressive. Lines within bubbles within lines. Very impressive. 
Ooh, good parallel lines here, Aditya. I love this one. I thought that was absolutely outstanding. Really, really good image. Uh, and that's a radiator, I think. I've got, I think I've got something similar in the bathroom. Possibly slightly dustier, but uh, that's very impressive. I like the way you've got the, uh, the light bouncing off it. And it's a really lovely abstract shape that you've pulled out of the hat there. Rachel, another good one here. I like this. And I like the fact that you're already playing around with the aspect ratio here. Um, I reckon this was 18.6. We'll get back to what I'm talking about in a second, which is what we're going to focus on today. But I think that aspect ratio worked really well. Don't watch the clock. Do what it does. Keep going. It's funny, isn't it? We're a bit more aware of the clock. Although the days just seem to vanish, don't they? And then we have this one, which I thought was possibly my favourite. Obviously, I don't have favourites. I'm a teacher. But this was my favourite this week, I think. I think it was great. Mr. Ledbitters was good, but I wouldn't want to give him the smug satisfaction of having the best picture. I thought this was absolutely fabulous. A, you spotted it. B, you managed to get it while it was still there. And C, that long aspect ratio, that kind of stretch frame that you've got, works incredibly well. I thought that was a really staggering image. So, uh, that was great. Please keep your photos coming this week. Keep the same number going. Every week you've done, you've done slightly more, you've made slightly more photos than you have done the week before. Now this is my chance to move on to the next section um, and I get a chance to play my jingle that I made one more time. I'm sorry, I can't resist it. Masterpiece. Oh, little things please, little minds. There we go, masterpiece. So uh, this week we're going to look at uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson and next week it's Yves Arnold. So let's jump straight in and have a look at Henri Cartier-Bresson. These are a few of his uh, famous images. He's made many, many, many images. He is probably one of the best known photographers. You can see him on the bottom right hand side there holding his trusty Leica, uh, a Leica rangefinder camera. Now he started his photography, uh, well, he was born 19, 1908. Um, he became a founder member of Magnum Photos, which is a huge picture agency. Uh, it's still going today. It's a massive picture agency. He was a street photographer, a candid photographer. So he'd be wandering around the streets holding his camera. You can see he's got in his hand there. And he would just be taking snapshot, snapshot, snapshot. He didn't much care for, uh, for processing his images. He didn't do it himself. We talked about Ansel Adams last time. Remember the... Uh, the the uh, photographer who took landscapes and he would he was he was an artist not just in the photos he took but also he thought of the, a dark room as an art where you would dodge your photos and burn them burning is to make parts of your photo darker dodging is to make it brighter if you ever looked at um, photoshop you'll see those tools um, they've been sort of dragged from the um, from the photographer's uh, dictionary so best known for capturing the decisive moment, capturing that moment at which something happens, um, is like a range finder, which is in his hands there. He didn't use flash. He thought it was he thought it was rather impolite to use flash. So he didn't. He also didn't believe in cropping his photos. What you took is what you took and you didn't crop it to make it look better afterwards. Uh, whether or not that's entirely true or not, uh, who can say? But that is what he claims. Um, and you can see a few examples. Do you remember the bottom left example there? I showed you a couple of weeks ago as the example that everyone goes to to talk about golden section, the kind of perfect image, and also capturing the moment because he's got the uh, he's got the cyclist on their on their bike just in that space there. You've got the the loop of the golden section, the curve rather, and everything's placed in just the perfect space. Great photographer. I I love his images, um, and obviously all in black and white. So I'm going to show you two of his images and I'm just going to give you some general impressions about why these have done so well. Again, with this image, which was at the racetrack, he has captured all of the people who managed to be looking towards him, but no one's looking at him. And I thought I was going to say to you, no one's looking at him. And then I checked. No one is looking at him. They're all focused on their sport. So capturing the moment, he would have waited until all of those binoculars went up to the eyes until they're watching to see how their horses that they've probably put money on or that they own are doing. And he's just caught people doing their hobby, focused completely on a subject. And it's, it's I just think it's a very, it's a very clever people watching photo. I love that one. Um, this is, um, he's taken so, if, if you Google Cartier-Bresson and look at his pictures, I think they're absolutely breathtaking. 
so here we've got diverging lines you've got this is a, a railway in oh i can't remember where, where it was um in, in in paris i can't remember which which railway this was uh, but somewhere near guardian orgs he did a lot of photography around there and you can see you've got the diverging um diagonals coming out from the the bottom of the image which opens up to reveal the train tracks which are in which are then curving away towards the right hand side and then you've got that um i suppose the what the goods whatever they've got on the left hand side there may be uh, i don't know whether it's material to fix the tracks or whether it's goods that'll go on the train on the left hand side probably the latter but then you've got these two characters standing on the right hand side and I was I was looking at it and thinking it shouldn't work, but it does work. And then I was thinking about last week and thinking, is it the V? Is it that V, the, the triangle that's being formed there? Um, and what's bizarre here is that what's what's the subject of this image? I'm I'm struggling. It's is it the people? Is it the is it the shapes or is it just watching people looking at something else? There's there's often a very good image in watching people who are watching something else so that's something else which is worth looking at so there we are that is um that's the masterpiece and that was uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson I won't play it again that's a that's a promise but I might have to play this one for you I have no shame uh, quiz time. In fact, it's so good, you're going to hear it again. Right. I hope you appreciated the rubber duck at the end as well. I mean, there's no end to my, uh, to me enjoying playing with sounds. Right. So quiz, let's see how we do. Now I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to put this next question up. Uh, as soon as you see the question, try and get the answers in the, uh, in the, in the chat now mr ledbitter uh, sends his apologies he's been dragged into a meeting miss brennan's been dragged into a meeting as well so you've got me all to yourselves today so you can watch how ham-fistedly i remember who actually gets these questions right so what am i saying 10 points for the correct answer and uh and it and it carries over so here we go i'm going to move on to the next question which in fact sorry doesn't carry over this one is the new one and i should say katie uh, your prize is on its way so I'm now going to go on to the next slide. Here's a question. From which language does the word aperture originate? From which language does the word aperture originate? Greek, 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 Greek. Oh, you, you can't, you, you can't hedge your bets, Aditya. That's uh, that, that's good. Greek, Greek, Greek. Oh my, my God. No, no, it's not Greek. It's not Greek. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to give it to Aditya because he has said Latin, which is what it is. So Aditya gets ten points for that. So let's go back to the uh, next question. Um, so Latin was indeed the answer. So here is the next question, and it's coming onto your screens now. What does aperture mean? What does aperture mean? What does aperture mean? Mm -hmm. Ooh, Katie's in there with holes straight away. Look at that. Very good. So uh, let's give you the uh, the. There we go, Katie's right with hole. That was good. Okay, so we're good with hole. That's Katie who gets 10 points. I have to write this down. I haven't got any, any anyone doing my, my work for me today. Right, so uh, that was correct. The answer was hole or opening. And let's go on to the next one, which is uh, who shot this image? Who can remember this from last week? Who shot this image? I am waiting to see the dude from last week. Yes, that is that is that is who shot it, or the or the or the dudess 
Nah, not Ansel Adams. He's the landscape guy. It was a woman. Don't you remember? No, you can't. You can't get. You can't get a mark for dude. Dude from last week. It wasn't a dude. It was a dude s. I'm not even sure that word exists. So not Ansel Adams. Do we know? Her name began with an A. Yeah, it was the person last week to take a picture of John Lennon. Uh, okay, if I tell you her first name, it was Annie. Can anyone think of her surname begins with an L? No. It's not looking like we're going to get this one at all. But it was the guy that took John Lennon. I might give you five points for that, Lizette. And it's not at all because I feel bad about being horrible to you last week. It's not linked in, in any way at all. Uh, five points for you. Right, so let's get rid of that. Um, and let's go and tell you the answer, which was Annie Leibovitz. She was the lady who photographed uh, the... Uh, the, the people, the Bush and, and, and his administration. Any life of it. Jolly good. Right, so next question. We describe light as having quality, direction, and... Quality, direction, and what? You were just too late, Adam. I might, I might give you five... Oh, look at Gaby's in there with colour straight away. What? Okay, so Gabe got in there with colour. Right, let me make a note of these because I'll forget otherwise. Um, let's go back to here. So I have got you absolutely right. It was light, it was quality, direction and colour. So I've got Adam, who I'm giving five points to, and I've got Gabe, who I'm giving ten to. D -d Don't expect me to add these up. This was just beyond beyond the call of duty. Right, uh, have I got any more questions? I can't remember. Uh, no, that was it. I've got a few more later on. So uh, that was pretty good, though, guys. A really fantastic effort. So good, I think you should hear my jingle again. I hope you appreciate the lightsaber that I squeezed in there as well. I really do need to go back to work. There's just no doubt about this at all. OK, so aspect ratios. Today's going to be a shorter session because uh, I think it was quite a long one last week. Um, it, it, it is a lightsaber swing. Yes, I... Uh, yeah, it, it was. I made one which was uh, me singing yellow, but it was so embarrassing that uh, my daughter told me I sounded like a goblin. So I, I, I have, I have, I'm going to look at that one again later on, perhaps. Um, it was a lightsaber, yeah. And there was a, there was a, um, a rubber duck being squeezed in the competition time as well. Uh, so aspect ratios, uh, because you're all very clever and very bright and you're good at this anyway, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But just want to let you know there are lots of different aspect ratios that you can use to frame your images and some work better for certain subjects. And do you remember that 18.6 I was talking about with uh, Rachel's image of the fly on the branch earlier? Well, you can see that you've got 18.6. It probably wasn't exactly 18.6, but it was there or thereabouts. Um, and I, I don't know what um, decisions Rachel took before cropping at that um, to that uh, ratio, but it worked. It worked incredibly well. So, you know, cameras in general, they've got this four to three aspect ratio, which is the one that you get when you just point your camera at something and you take a photo. It's taken in four, three. So it's four along and three down. It doesn't matter four what, it doesn't matter three what, but that's, that's the ratio of the width of the frame to the height of the frame. And obviously, if you turn it on its side, you then get three, four, because it's then narrower than it is taller. So if you go portrait or landscape, that is the most commonly used aspect ratio. Uh, it's actually the one that used to be used for TV uh, back in the day. Nowadays, um, if you buy a TV, everyone buys a widescreen TV. Um, but it's, it was quite interesting that originally, going back sort of 20 years, all the TVs were 4.3. And if you wanted to see anything that wasn't 4.3, you would go to the cinema. And it became the standard for cameras. Why 4.3? Because it mirrors the field of view of the human eye. The field of view of a human eye is about 4.3. That's about what we see um, with our binocular horizontal view. In other words, we scan things horizontally and that pretty much sums up or reflects how it is that we see things. So 
when we talk about aspect ratio up at the top there we've got Rachel's picture of the fly and I'm having a guess that was 18.6 and you've got Sharjeev's picture of the uh, of the fish which is a square one to one so what I want you to think about this week is when is how you can change up the aspect ratio that you use for your images and how you might do that and why you might do that and obviously it might be just a question of cropping it after you've taken it and then seeing what works but maybe also setting it up in a certain aspect ratio so that's the size of your field of view and then seeing what sort of an image you can take with that um, so how do you decide whether you're going to use this is 16.9 for example here I like 16.9 I think it's a really uh, lovely uh, ratio it's actually the one that's used for HD for high high definition is, is, is a 169 ratio um, it does create a certain wow factor and one of the reasons this happened in the first place um, wouldn't 186 be the same as 31 yes it would but it's commonly known as 186 yeah your maths is sound you're right but I've only seen it called 186 that's a really good point 31 186 mm. yeah don't know let's um let's um i'm going to give you a screaming goat and another five points for that because that's just very interesting but i I've, I've never seen it called seen it called that but i will go and find out no not being difficult it's called having an inquiring mind and i've got a lot of time for that so but that is really interesting yeah so it is but it was interesting actually just going back and looking at this how that shot of the fly did really work in that ratio it was just the right thing to do and it really stood out and somehow um, it just seemed to really emphasize the thing that sat right in the middle of the frame didn't it it, it worked really well um, so when you're doing 16.9 this is a good image that I've pinched from the internet hopefully um, that shouldn't be too much of a problem but I like the fact that, that this um, photographer's done what he or she was supposed to do which is it's great for landscapes fabulous for landscapes but the difficulty is if you don't put something center stage and bring something up towards you it can end up looking quite um, it can end up looking quite flat uh, and I think that's the case with the uh, with the with, with the tree you can see here that tree is what makes this image now I'm, is is the tree the subject of the image I guess it is but it's the combination of the two because it's a pretty landscape anyway but if you just taken the picture without that tree there it would have looked there'd have been all this dead space between you and the horizon and it wouldn't have looked very good so some ideas for when you try shooting in 169 which is going to be your challenge this week try and put try and get a subject in fairly close to you and try and take it off center oh my word there's some difficult maths going on here i, I we'll, we'll come back to that at the end if i dare um so try and try and put your subject up close and try and get it off center and then try and take a landscape with that and see what you end up with square square is not used that often it's very hard to use um, however it's very good for symmetrical shapes which when I was writing this out I discovered had two M's and I thought it was one but uh, it just didn't look right um, so one to one which is square I don't think anyone can argue with that one to one uh, it's one on one side and one down the other side great for symmetrical shapes um, if you want to shoot something square and you're planning on shooting it square leave yourself plenty of space around the edges and that will probably give you the room to then in post um, go and change things right let's move on uh, what have we got here so I was then just going to show you how you actually go about doing this um, and this is using my iPhone and I was going to do a demonstration then realized that actually you've all got different sorts of phones haven't you so um so if you go into your photo uh, app and you actually just drag up on the word photo that then displays so this is <laughs> doesn't show that well it says photo here but if you just drag up and then you end up with the aspect ratios here oh there's a major argument going on here I the fact you both care is really important so that's good um, so what I'd like you to do is to have a play with that and I don't know what it is for Android because I haven't got an Android phone but to get to the aspect ratio simply drag up uh, that's good as long as there were no one damaged in the uh, discussion of uh, of aspect ratios that's fine I, I, I would hate any blood to be spilled um, so hints and tips for aspect ratio don't feel that you've got to compose things right up to the edge of the frame 
it's often something that photographers do. Uh, the fact that the frame ends there doesn't mean you've got to put things right up to the edge of it. And sometimes it gives you more room to then play around with it afterwards, to manipulate it afterwards. So you can ignore those unused parts of your frame if you so desire. Um, have a go at doing 16.9 or panoramas. Um, it's difficult. Um, try and put something in the foreground, like I mentioned earlier, um, or the image can, can appear really, really flat. And what's frustrating, if you can remember the image I showed you that I took at Seven Sisters, when it was a beautiful vista that I managed to turn into a snapshot of just being there. So, so think about composing um, of what your subject's going to be in that picture. Um, look around the edge of the frame, and I, I know I'm saying don't worry about the edge of the frame. Often images are ruined because you go, you, you take a picture of, some, of something wonderful, and then you look at it afterwards, and you can see there's clutter around the outside of the frame that you hadn't, and if you'd moved, or if you had taken that piece of rubbish away, or if you just changed your angle slightly, it wouldn't have been there. So do scan around the outside to make sure that area is clear because it will annoy you afterwards because sometimes you don't you don't find things in your image until actually after you've taken it so angles and heights are the last thing that you can look at there oh right we've got a few more quiz questions so here we go i shall get this straight on there the uh oh i'm probably gonna have to play the quiz time jingle one more time yeah, I think I'm going to have to. OK, I didn't actually get a chance to play my techniques jingle. I have to save that for you for next time. I'm sure you can probably wait very easily. So here is the first question. Which term? This is a this is a repeat from last time because you lot were rubbish last time and you didn't know this one. So which term is used to describe turning the camera, turning the camera to follow a subject? Turning the camera to follow a... Whoa, Lizette is straight in there with the correct answer, which was indeed panning. So that is a... Uh, that is 10 points to Lizette, who gets the magic chime. That is outstanding. And that was fast. Panning. Excellent. Right, so uh, that is indeed the answer. Here is the next question, which is... What type of feeling do horizontal lines evoke? What type of feeling do horizontal lines evoke? Lizette got 10 for that. What kind of feeling do horizontal lines evoke? Oh, calmness. That was, uh, that was outstanding. I think... So that is a that is a a good uh, a good win there for Gabe, who got that absolutely correct. So that was Gabe ten points. Oh, it's hotting up. It's like university challenge. Um, so uh, let's go on to the next one. You've got a whole host there. Um, calm, peacefulness, rest, all that sort of stuff. Okay, here is the I think it's the last question. I can't quite remember. Here it is. What impression may vertical lines give? What impression may vertical lines give? Vertigo, neatness, vastness, <coughs> height. I like that. Height. They're all answers. I'll give them that much. Just an excuse to press my buzzer. It's my favourite noise. Distance. I'll just give it, give it another few seconds. Endlessness, distance, time. Being puny. <laughs> That's true, actually. Being puny is definitely worth something. Um, but ginormous tall okay 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 so let's uh, let's get out of there what I was looking for was gravity or flow or speed or equilibrium I'm gonna double check the answers I know you lot won't let me get away with it uh, panning 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 instantly is vertigo vastness height height distance being puny tall ginormous which is a grand <laughs> total <laughs> of <laughs> nothing so let's go on to that no points for that one do I have another question? I can't remember. No, I don't. 
that is the end of quiz time. Quiz time. Quiz time. Quiz time. Right then. So we have reached the end, which is uh, time for the assignment for next week. I would like you to carry on taking amazing photographs. Try to have a play with um, aspect ratio this week. We've got a slightly more technical challenge next week, which is trying to use um, mobile phones to trying to learn how to use uh, how to freeze focus, how to how to freeze exposure, and how to uh, how to be able to set set your camera and then change where you're pointing your camera whilst keeping the same settings i'm explaining it really badly but it'll make more sense next week um focus lock is the is the word i was the phrase i was looking for so using focus lock next week is something i'd like to have a look at because as a professional photographer or as an amateur photographer um focus lock is something that you would that you would do quite regularly you would focus in on what you wanted and then you might recompose in camera so your um, your job this week is to try to uh, use new aspect ratios, whether it's square, 16, 9, um, 4, 3, uh, it doesn't matter. But have a play around with it. And I guess the challenge is to try and create a panorama. Um, and panoramas work best when you've got something in the foreground, which is a focus, and then you've got beautiful landscape in the uh, in the background. It's not always that easy to do. But that is what I would like you to try to focus on for next week and have a look through and hope that you produce images that are as amazing next week as they were this week. So how long have I lasted? Oh, still 40 minutes. I can't do it for less than 40, can I? So it has been an absolute uh, pleasure uh, to uh, to see you all again. The competition is going to roll over, like I said. Um, oh, I can play the competition. Let me play the competition time jingle. And now, Hazel the Kilo brings you the moment you've been waiting for. Competition time. Yeah, I, I'm not going to make any more of these. That was not the best use of my Sunday afternoon. So uh, the competition will roll over, over till next week. We've had a couple of entries. Let's get some more in, you know, the uh, Spot the Difference competition. So it's been a massive pleasure. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely, lovely week and I will see you all same time, same place next week. I look forward to it. See you guys. Have a good week. Bye bye.